Let's do this. Paris, Wednesday morning, 10.30 a.m. crowd, room full of early birds. I'm very impressed. And if you're from the future watching this on YouTube, I want you to also be very impressed with the people here. Wednesday morning, 10.30, got here through the pouring rain. Well done to all of you. Right, let's get this party started. Hello, everybody. My name's Marco Gorelli and I'll be talking to you for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. I work at Quansight Labs as a pandas maintainer, but today I'll be talking about something completely different. That is to say, NBQA. So I'm going to start by answering the question on everyone's mind, which is, what on earth is NBQA? I'll then give you a demo and uh, show you how you can start using it today to improve your life with Jupyter Notebooks. Hello, everybody. After that, because this is JupyterCon, we are not just going to stay on the surface. We are not just going to talk about uh, how to use it. We need to go deeper. We're going to talk about how it works internally. And then, because this is JupyterCon, we cannot just stay on the surface about how it works and uh, what goes on internally. We also need to talk about how it doesn't work. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about that a bit. My hope is that someone will approach me in the corridor tell telling me how to fix this limitation. If it doesn't happen at JupyterCon, it ain't happening nowhere. And after that, community. Let's talk about the community and where do we go from here. And finally, we need to make a decision. I can either stand here and we can have an awkward silence for a bit, or we can have an engaging Q&A. Up to you. Right, let's start at the beginning. A very good place to start. What on earth is NBQA? Quality Assurance for Jupyter Notebooks. NBQA is a Python package which lets you run any standard Python code quality tool on a Jupyter Notebook. Let's uh, read out some examples. Feel free to give a cheer when you hear your favorite one being called out. So we've got MyPy, we've got Rough, we've got Flake8, we've got PyLint, got the, woo, got a big PyLint fan here in the audience today. We've got the Black Formatter and lots of <laughs> fans of the Black Formatter. Nice. And uh, finally, we've got iSort. So I created this uh, during the 2020 lockdown and uh, was initially expecting that the only people downloading it would be myself and my girlfriend, but it slightly exceeded expectations. We now see a million downloads on PyPI. Strictly speaking, when I made the slide, it was 950,000, but I was feeling optimistic. I'll uh, check the numbers tomorrow. Hopefully I didn't lie. And uh, this number seems to be increasing every month. And it's been used by several open source projects. And a personal highlight for me was when parts of it were vendored into the black formatter. So people tend to suffix their commands with a semicolon in order to hide that noise. So what's the issue? The issue is that the black formatter thinks that these semicolons are useless. Which uh, I think they are in Python, but in Jupyter they mean something. So in NBQA we need to take, we need to track which cells ended with semicolons, and then restore those semicolons at the end. Using regular expressions, not a chance. We tokenize the cell so we can uh, do it more robustly and not be thrown off by uh, comments and uh, insignificant white space. Yeah, regular expressions, not one in sight. Now, because this is JupyterCon, we also need to go deeper. Let's talk about how it doesn't quite work. Let's talk about a known limitation. Suppose you have a cell which contains multi-line magic, like the one shown there in the top left. If you wrote that cell just on a single line, then both of them would get transformed by IPython's transformer manager to exactly the same thing. And uh, why is that an issue? It's because I can't tell what you originally wrote if all I see is that string at the bottom. So there's no way to round trip here. And if you took care to write a really long bash command, a split over 50 lines, you might be a bit disappointed if NBQA returned it to you all on a single line. So solution is to skip those cells. 
just, just those cells. We still process the rest of the notebook, but that particular cell, which contains multi-line magics, just gonna ignore it. If anyone would like to come up to me in the corridor and suggest a solution, I would be very happy to hear it. <laughs> Regular expressions, that was a comment from the audience in case people didn't uh, hear this uh, very funny joke. So, yeah, community. That's what we're here for, not just the technology, but the community. So let's talk about the NBQA community. I uh, used a little tool called All Contributors to recognize contributions from everyone. So if someone uh, mentioned it on a blog post, if someone uh, mentioned it on a podcast or made a video tutorial or a LinkedIn post, whatever, can give them recognition on the readme like this. I'm not saying this works for all projects. Uh, in Pandas, uh, putting the avatars of 13,000 people on the readme wouldn't really work. But you know, if you're running a smallish project like NBQA, then I do recommend it as a way to recognize everybody. Uh, something slightly perhaps unconventional I did was that I would give uh, people right access uh, the moment they made a successful pull request. Uh, is this risky? Um, yeah, maybe. But nothing bad happened. If anything, it seemed to encourage people to contribute more. So again, if you're running a piece of software that's not yet critical infrastructure, that can be a good way to engage people. So where do we go from here? Some of you might have heard of an amazing Python tool called Rust, sorry, called Rough, which is written in Rust. And like all Rust projects, it's blazingly fast and uh, seems to be replacing every other code quality tool. Is it going to replace NBQA? Given this comment by the author, maybe. Uh, but that's okay. I'd be honored if someone uh, thought it worthwhile to rewrite this thing in Rust. But in the meantime, I'd like to think it's still relevant. Time to get to our confusion. So we talked about NBQA, what it is, and how it can improve your life with Jupyter Notebooks today. We then went deeper and talked about what happens under the hood when you run it. We then went even deeper and talked about how it doesn't work. It's a, a bit of an edge case. I don't think it's that common to have multi-line bash uh, magic spanning multiple lines, but if you do have them, then that is a limitation and it would be nice to solve it. And then finally, we talked about the importance of uh, fostering a nice uh, community because none of us is an island and we can work so much better if we synergize with other people. Right, time to make a decision. Do we have an engaging Q&A or do I stand here awkwardly in silence? Hey, we've got a question. That's a fantastic question. Are line numbers correct? So we do take care to record the um, which line in which cell corresponds to which line in the temporary Python file. So then we can map back. Uh, this is also a reason why we can't support multi-line magics because otherwise we just uh, don't uh, know what line things correspond to. So when, uh, when we present the output, we do write it as cell number and then line number, rather than just line number. Great question. Does anyone else have any such great questions? Uh, that's a yeah, great question. How, so for anyone who didn't hear it, how do we teach uh, junior people to use uh, tools like NBQA who maybe are struggling with Git and so on? So my suggestion would be run it in CI so that if they didn't do something quite correctly, then you can have an automated machine tell them that they're wrong, and people tend to take that feedback a bit more constructively compared to when a human gives the feedback. As for whether you should use it on the command line or pre-commit, if uh, your team is open to using pre-commit, I suggest using that. Um, doesn't seem to be the case in all projects for reasons that go beyond my understanding, but that's just the reality of the, of the world we live in. Great question. Anyone else? Hey. Uh, okay, so if I understand, how would I show in a pull request what changes need to be made? Yeah, that's a good question. So currently, you will just have to click on the logs, and then the logs will show you the diff. Admittedly, that isn't the most, readable, the most human readable thing. There, there is an option in NBQA which is 
dash dash nbqa dash diff, and that will show you the output in a slightly more human readable manner. So if you're running this in CI, I suggest you prepend that option so that uh, maybe more junior people who haven't managed to set it up correctly locally can see what changes they need to make. Though ideally, get them to set it up correctly locally. Right, fantastic question. Any more? Hey, we've got more, one more question. Let's go. So magic, ah, that's a great question. What do we do with cell magics that the content isn't Python code? So we can usually tell from the cell magic whether the content is going to be uh, Python code or not. So for example, if a cell starts with percentage percentage JavaScript, that's a pretty good clue that it's not going to be Python. So I think by, from what I remember, by default, we don't process the content of the cell magic. We just hard code the magics which are known to be valid Python code. And as a user, if you register your own custom magic, you can also, in the configuration file, pass your extra magics, and uh, then those contents will be passed as well. Fantastic question. Um, don't really know how we're doing for time. I'll just, just, just keep taking questions until te someone tells me to stop. 10 to, OK. Um, yeah, let's take, yeah, whatever. Let's, take, <laughs> let's keep going. Thanks. I did not know that, and that's an advantage of giving such a presentation at JupyterCon. You learn new things, new solutions to problems. Great, it's already been worthwhile. Thank you for that uh, comment. Uh, I can see, I think there's a hand up there in the back. I can't see so much because it's not illuminated, but yeah. Uh, currently, it's just limited to Python, I'm afraid. But it would be pretty cool to extend it. Uh, having said that, if you have a Python code quality tool that runs on a different language, you could use that. Like uh, Prettier? Yeah, like that uh, That one will run on like JavaScript and lots of other things. That one. You need, you need to be able to run it through Python, but if you do that, it should work. And you can also uh, run... Um, you can pass the dash dash nbqa dash shell option and then you can run anything that's just available in your shell, but that's totally um, up to you to support it. Uh, right, from there in the back, I can't tell if you're scratching your head if, or if you've got a question. Awesome. Controversial. Controversial, fantastic, let's do this. What do I think about semicolons? Yeah, you could do. Um, yeah, as a user, you could do that. So instead of having to put a trailing semicolon, you could just assign the command to some uh, dummy variable, some placeholder variable. But uh, as a uh, code quality tool, I can't make assumptions about what my users are going to do. So need to handle both cases. I think we had a question from this side of the room. Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, so there are some tools that support reading directly from a standard in. And the reason I didn't, uh, use that is because I didn't want to assume that all tools would be able to do that. But yeah, maybe I can do a fast path for tools that do support that. Yeah, contributions would be welcome, and uh, I'll put your avatar in the readme. Hey. Ah, that's a great question. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Flake 8, it uh, reports lots of uh, nitpicky things, and do we really want to have to obey all of them when we're running Jupyter Notebooks, maybe not. So in the readme, in the example that I give of running Flake 8, I do have some recommended rules to ignore. Maybe it's not enough. And yeah, if uh, anyone from the community wanted to suggest more rules to ignore and make a pull request and get uh, the avatar featured on the readme, then uh, you'd be more than welcome to do so. <laughs> cool, uh, shall we take a break? Or any last... Oh, sorry, I may have misunderstood the question. What do I want to implement next? Um, no, not really. I think it's kind of finished. It uh, solved a problem which I had, and now I don't use Jupyter Notebooks anymore because I'm now a software engineer rather than a data scientist. So happy to keep maintaining it if uh, bugs are reported, but I don't uh, have a huge desire to uh, implement new features or change the direction massively. Uh, if anyone did, then I'd be happy to hand over maintainership. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I've uh, kind of had to come to terms with it already. Like, uh, 
you know, I work on pandas for a living, and uh, Polars is a data frame library written in Rust, which is uh, superior in virtually every respect. So I think uh, you just have to come to terms with the fact that better tools are going to come uh, along. And uh, yeah, I'm learning Rust. Cool, let's, uh, let's take a break. Cool, thank you very much. You've been a fantastic audience, Paris.